This is one game away from being NBA champ, being in the history of this game, being always there. The spin move, the finish! Giannis Antetokounmpo with one of the most iconic performances in the storied history of the NBA Finals. And the slam from Antetokounmpo! The long wait has ended after a half century. The Milwaukee Bucks are NBA champions once again. I'm at the top. I wanted to do it here in the city. I wanted to do it with these guys. You did it. Well, there was a lot of guys that was that was real tough. A lot of guys that were real strong. Mostly, mostly the Knicks guys. They were they were the, they were the toughest guys. Uh, Oakley, uh, Mason, uh, guys like that. I, I never played against Xavier McDaniel, McDaniel's, but he seemed to be really tough. But other than that, no, no. Because, you know, play, playing against the Knicks, they touched you up every time you came to the home. Not, not every now and then. Every time. They treated you differently? They, they, played, me, they played me hard, which I liked, I loved. And, you well, know, it's something that you have to endure if you want to become great. You hold a grudge against anybody with how they play you or play no, you? No, never. Nothing? Never. You were able to just walk away? Yeah, because it, it – it, uh, it made me, it made me better. It let me know I had to step up. It let me know I wasn't that great. Like you know, a lot of people take flack. When I take flack, a lot of people right now, oh, you're too hard on the youngsters. Well, I'm just doing what was done to me. I can remember when I was averaging 30, 35 in LA, but we'd always get swept. And the great Kareem Abdul-Jabbar said, "Hey, he hasn't won a championship yet." Did I whine? Did I cry? Did I complain on social media? Nope, I didn't say anything because Kareem Abdul-Jabbar had G14 classification to say that. <laughs> what am I going to do? Have a dispute with the greatest NBA player ever? So when he said that, when he gave me constructive criticism, I took it and I listened and I brought my game to another level. So these guys now, they're, they're pudding pops. You say something about them, oh, church. <laughs> That's what they are. Was Carl Malone tough on you? Well, we we never got to we never got to like a cross matchup a lot, but you know every time I guard him, he would just take me outside. But he was very very strong. Lane Beer, did you cross paths with Lane Beer? Yeah, we got into a uh, sort of a scuffle. They, they you know, Hacker Shack was was documented in two thousand, but you know guys were you know doing it all the time. They would just get it, grab me, and foul. I mean, but I caught I caught Lane Beer towards towards his end, so I'm not going to disrespect Lane Beer. Because I, I actually seen what he did, seen how he did it, and it kind of kind of helped me with my game growing up. He was smart. He he knew his limitations, Shaq. You know. Yeah, very smart. Very smart. I you know, played the right way. Played with a lot of passion. I was watching the uh, documentary when he said he he used to love to go agitate fans in other arenas because I got him going. And you missed Bird right by a year. Yes, I missed Bird by a year, but. Somebody was telling me that Bird was the biggest smack talker in the game. And they say, uh, Dennis Scott told me Larry Bird told him the move he was going to do and do it. And, they, and did it. So, you know, I, was, uh, I wasn't a fan of Larry Bird growing up because I thought everything he did was lucky. But then when I <laughs> – I did. Like he <laughs> – I had a friend whose name was Mitch Riles. I was Magic and Mitch was Bird. And Mitch could do the same thing. Bird. Mitch had the long hair, and he did everything Bird did. One day we was playing a seven-game series, and it was tied, three or three. And he shot that same over the shot, over the backboard shot that Bird did. I was so mad. We, <laughs> we instantly got into a fight. But you know, when I when I started, you know, getting over and you know seeing, seeing guys put in the work, I realized that hey, he is one of the greatest players ever, and it's not luck; it's all skill. And you wanted to be magic. Yes, I did. And that's why, you know, for a big guy, my handles were pretty good. I'm not saying I had great handles, but I didn't have terrible handles. So I used to do everything magic with, you know, with the passes, the lookaways, you know, bringing the ball on court, making a great play. So, yes, I was magic. Well, I saw where uh, Cedric Maxwell and Rick Carlisle, they've likened Luka Doncic to Larry Bird. I could, I could see that. It's kind of unfair at that age to do it, though, to him, Shaq. I mean... It's, it's, it is unfair, but, you know, he, listen, he, I could tell he wants to be great. He will be great. He has a lot to live up to. 
I remember my second year when they named me to the NBA top 50, people were going crazy. Oh, he only been in two years. I was one of the top 50 players. But I knew, I was like, okay, all you old timers don't think I'm one of the 50 great players, watch this. So I know Luca. And listen, Luca's been a pro since 16. So, you know, he's already going up against the best. And then two or three years, everybody's going to be fading out. You know, I saw, I saw a post one day, I don't want to get the ages wrong, but it was like, LeBron, 36, Durant, 34, Curry, 32. Then they, at the bottom, they said, enjoy. And that kind of scared me. I was like, man, these guys, I never knew these guys were in their 30s. But, you know, four or five years from now, we're going to be start looking at the, you know, the Donovan Mitchell, you know, the Zach Levine. You know, it's going to be a new breed of, you know, takeover. Do you think we'll have anybody ever surpass Kobe's 81? Tomorrow's the anniversary of Wilt's 100. Do you think we'll have somebody get to 80? If anybody could do it, I think it could be James, Kyrie, KD, Steph, Devin Booker. Those are the only names that come to mind right now that could probably surpass that. Yeah, 81 is a that's a big number. It is a big number. I always wondered, though, like, what do you – because Wilt did it, and he was the biggest guy back then, and they just fed him the ball. But do you think you could have gone for 100? I would have to be shooting 75% from the free throw line. Yeah, because Wilt was 28 or 32 in that game from the line when he had 100. I would have to have a, I would have to have a great night. I would have to have a lot of three seconds calls not called. I would have to have a lot of easy points. And I would have to have no double or triple team. It would be possible. Yeah, that, that wouldn't happen. Uh, exactly. What are you wearing, by the way, on Wednesday night? Because I'm not going to disrespect the wrestler, but trying to. Do what they do. I'm not a wrestler. Where I'm using I'm not a wrestler, but I'm a fighter. Wearing sweatpants. I'm coming to work. Oh, okay. So you can't wear like the tights like the British Bulldogs? And like you can't. I can, but I don't want to disrespect the wrestlers. I have a lot of respect for the wrestlers. They're tremendous athletes. And I don't want to take their shine away. I don't want people to think I'm mocking the sport. So this is a fight. I'm coming to his world in my fight clothes. Uh, what's the coolest thing in the room there with you? Uh, let me see. I got all my trophies up there. See it? Yep. Looks pretty good. Yep. And when my father passed away, he was a military drill sergeant. That's his flag. They folded it. So I always keep that with me. My MVP. I think that's my rookie of the year trophy right there. And hold on. See what else I got. You should have another MVP in there, Shaq. Oh, I know that. <laughs> it's in Steve Nash's house. <laughs> uh, hey, Steve. <laughs> Did you ever say anything to him about that MVP? Uh, no, no. I'll do it for you. you. I have a question for you. Okay. Most valuable player, right? Yeah. It's, it's supposed to be singular, right? So why do people say whichever team has the best record? It's not most valuable team. It's most valuable player. I always thought most valuable player was the guy who had the most valuable stats, not about the guy who has the best record. Because I think I lost to Steve twice because their record was better. But, Jack, if you said player of the year, then that would be different than most valuable, I think. And then you might, you might have people vote differently if it was for player of the year, not most valuable player. So most valuable player should be rewarded for the guy that has the best stats on the team that has the best record. But, you know, the media loves a great story, Shaq. That's why when, you know, the Greek freak is not going to win the MVP this year, no matter how great he is. Um, they want a good story. Like LeBron is a good story. It's been like seven years. James Harden now going to a new team, maybe MVP. Yeah, but what about Steph Curry? Well, Steph- I, I, no, that was my pick to start the year. But I thought if Klay Thompson stayed healthy, they were going to compete for a championship. But uh, well, I, I never understood what... what- how they voted for the most valuable player. And I think Steph Curry, I don't know if you agree with me. I think Steph Curry is the most influential basketball player of the last 30 years because he's given everybody hope that they could play in the NBA. Yes. I'm, I'm watching these little kids now. Yeah. And I'm like, bro, I, I've never seen a little kid do, dribble like that, shoot like that. Yes, I, 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 I would agree. Because I can't be like you and I can't be like Mike, but – there's a chance I might be able to shoot like Steph. Yes. I, they give I, us hope. They give us hope. Uh, good luck on Wednesday night. It's always great to talk to you. I don't, I'm going to go out on a limb, and I think you're going to win on Wednesday night. 
No, I know I'm going to win. Oh, you are. You know you're going to win. Yes, this is a fight. I'm not going to lose. But what, whatever it takes for me to win, if I got to do, pull out some little, you know, uh, dirty moves. Okay. Yeah. 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 Hell yes. I don't blame you. Uh, thank you, Shaq. Great to talk to you. Uh, what are we doing a movie again? Have you talked to Adam? Uh, well, Sandman did that basketball one. Which one? He he shot one. It's not done yet. Oh, he didn't ask you about being in that. No, the last movie I did with him was the uh, Hubie Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, me too. I miss you, brother. I'm thinking Happy Gilmore too. Hey, whatever, whatever Adam needs, you know I'm there. Whatever you could be. Sh- hey, you could be his caddy. Right. Yes. Yeah, <laughs> Shaq <true>. caddy. <laughs> <laughs> Max to keep a cool booty while I address this situation, all right? No, Max, that's Max. You, what, stop, stop, just stop. What Max telling me? Stop it, Max, stop. What, Max? What are you talking about? Calm down. Hold Rachel. that L, hold that L. He better knock him down. He's a professional. Go put some respect oh, yeah. on that man's name. We lost our mind debating with you. Yeah, you lost, all right. They want all this smoke. Carry up. Bring in all that smoke. Big Perk, how we feeling today? Yeah, hey, hey, Molly, it's a beautiful morning. What's yeah. going on, Molly? What's up, boy? What it do, I'm Big Perk? good. Fella? We're good, we're good. Thank you guys for filling in for Max and Stephen A today. Really appreciate it. And Kimberly Martin will be back with us in just a bit. Uh, we got to carry on. I understand. I'm going to play that for everybody at home, mm-hmm. and then we'll react to it. Sound good? Oh, Perk, you got Let's it. You got it. a fresh live one for us? Okay, here we go. You I, do this. I, I, here we go. Here we go. Look, right now, the late, great David Stern, former commissioner, is from the skies above smiling down. You know why, Molly and Boy? For the what? simple fact that his dream was, his NBA dream, was to make the NBA a global sport for international players. And right now, we're witnessing that. We're witnessing mm-hmm. greatness from them. If you look back from our last three MVP can MVP winners, Giannis, Giannis, Jokic, and you go into this season and you watch Giannis win his first NBA championship at the age of 26 and you watch his post-game interviews and you watch how he carried himself with humbleness, with a great character. This is a guy that you want representing your franchise. A guy that's going to lay it out on the line when he's on the court. A guy that's going to represent your franchise in great fashion off the court. He has set the bar extremely high. And after looking at Giannis and watching him play, listening to his post-game interviews, watching him celebrate, if you're not a fan of Giannis Antetokounmpo as a person, then guess what? You are just a bona fide hater. So with that being said, I love the way that the NBA has gone global. I love with the way the way that the international players and what they have brought to the table for us not only co- on the court, but their character off the court. Carry on. I like that one, man. That's what I'm talking about. And I think you can add Joel and B to that as well. I think he plays a perfect hill. You talk about you know being able to open it up. We, we're seeing it, you know, in the in the Olympics and you know, you know the um, American team going over there and losing to Nigeria, right? You know, and that's what you want. The world is becoming small. And I think that was David Stern's um, vision so that, you know, it can become a global sport and that you can uh, grow the fan base. It started with the dream team. And now, right now, you know, you look at some of the great, you know, Luka Doncic, right? You think about Jokic. Now you add, you know, Giannis there. And uh, he's class personified, right? He did it the right way. He came over here. He did it his way. And to the victor goes to spoils. Yeah. Fifth player out the, uh, outside of the U.S. to win MVP. Go ahead, Burke. Well, well, you know what else is that when you when you watch when you watch it, it also puts pre- it also put pressure on the American athletes, the, the the players that grew up in the United States, to hold them accountable, to make sure that they're on top of their games. Because what it's only a, a four hundred and fifty you know uh, roster spots in the NBA, so you know now guys has to elevate their game, and guys also have to elevate their character. If you're a franchise, if you're a franchise, you're an organization. You paying a guy to lead your franchise 35, 40 million a year. Some getting forty five. You want those guys to 
represent your brand in great fashion. You want those guys to go out there and make sure that they're a guy that, that say, hey, when you think of the Milwaukee Bucks, a team that haven't won in 50 years, and your leader is a guy like Giannis who's going to carry – carry himself like a like a tremendous human being off the court. This is what you want. He reminds me a lot of the, the great Tim Duncan and the way that he carried the Spurs organization, the way that he showed character, his humbleness to the game, his dedication to the sport. I mean, I, I love the fact how, like, he was built, not born, right? You know, we all see the pictures now. We kind of mm. laugh at him when he came in at 18 years old and you see the work that he put in. We, Me and you and I both know you don't put on 40 pounds because you, you know, because this guy given talent, that's that's been put in work in the dark, right? And what's done in the dark comes out in the light. And I think, you know, right now, until the victor goes to sports, he's controlling the narrative. I mean, because we know so little about Giannis. We don't know his story, right? Because he didn't grow up in those AAU tournaments where we know his backstory. We knew everything about LeBron, KD. We're starting to learn, you know, the chapters of Giannis. And, you know, it's amazing what, what, what this kid has been through. From going to being a street vendor, to bringing his brothers over, to hearing the reports about, you know, when he first came over, how he was so homesick, how he decided to come back. If we would have knew all that stuff, we would have knew there was no chance of him leaving the Milwaukee because he's an extremely loyal player. Yeah, you know what else is impressive before we move on here? This is the second season that players born outside the U.S. won MVP, the Joker, Finals MVP, Giannis, Defensive Player of the Year, Rudy Gobert. I want to stay with that subject and talk about the Olympics, though, Perk. How impressed are you with Team Nigeria? I'm very impressed. Very, very impressed. They play extremely hard. And you have to realize a lot. A few of those guys play in the NBA, but they play with a certain type of passion, right? They're showing. My high school coach always used to tell me, Molly, you never know who's watching. And mm -hmm. that, that's in life, right? And the way Absolutely. that they approach the game of basketball, that's how they go out there on the court. They, they, they know that the eyes are on them. They know that they go is some of those guys that are not in the NBA. They want to get to the NBA, and they know that the stage is set but most importantly you know what I'm impressed by is Mike Brown we're talking about an assistant coach who hadn't had a head coaching job in a long time he's taking it serious right coaching his team having them prepared offensively and defensively locked in and taking it serious because he know that eyes are on him as well I mean I tell you what